Speaking of crybabies, I want to talk about Christopher Rufo. Now, I feel like most of you already know who Christopher Rufo is, but if you don't, this is the individual who popularized hysteria over critical race theory. Now, this person decided to tweet out a video that was on my radar. So I can't play the clip, but this is a video from some Disney movie. I don't know which one, but he says here, exclusive, I've obtained leaked video from Disney's upcoming show, Baymax, which promotes the transgender flag and the idea that men can have periods to children as young as two years old. It's all part of Disney's plan to re-engineer the discourse around kids and sexuality. Um, now, I watched this clip and basically this lady right here is trying to figure out what pads to get or no, 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 this white ghost robot thing. I don't know what this is, but it's, I guess, looking for pads. And so this lady makes a recommendation and other people make a recommendation. And then for two seconds... There's somebody who is seemingly a trans man wearing a turquoise and pink shirt that looks like the trans flag and says, oh, well, I like these ones. And that's it. Two seconds. Just the mere existence of a trans man apparently is going to turn every single child who tunes into Baymax transgender like that. It's almost like a magical spell, right? Where if your child is exposed to anyone from the LGBTQ plus community gay, bi, trans, they uh, adopt that same identity themselves, right? And they, like, I I'm, I'm memeing, right? But they literally believe this. This is why they think that, you know, the rate of LGBTQ plus people is increasing because of exposure to LGBTQ plus people. They think that it's a choice. So, you know, if your kid is exposed to a gay person, they think, oh, that looks so cool. I want to be gay now. And then they become gay like that because that's how it happens. You know, don't, does anyone who's LGBTQ in the chat remember how when you were little, all of a sudden you chose to be gay or straight? You made that conscious decision. It wasn't something that just occurred organically and naturally. You chose, ooh, I want to be gay or straight. And it, really, if it worked that way, there would be zero gay or trans people because all we see on television, all we see in cartoons, movies, is straight cis people. So if it were a choice, I mean, there would just never be gay or trans people. So look... I decided to um, utilize a little bit of toxic masculinity to bully Christopher Rufo because these same dipshits complain about cancel culture. Does anyone remember how in 2021, for like six months, conservatives were screeching in unison about how the left canceled Cat in the Hat and canceled the Muppets? And I think there were other cartoons that they were uh, bitching about too. So all of a sudden, the discourse has flipped. And now, according to conservatives, cancel culture good. So um, I responded by saying, sounds like this conservative snowflake is a triggered little pussy. Need a safe space, Christopher Rufo? And the answer to that question is, yes, he needed a safe space because he blocked me immediately within like a minute. So definitely triggered. You know, this begs the question, why are conservative men so weak? You know, is there a lack of testosterone? Do they not have good male figures as role models in their lives? They just seem so weak, such beta male cucks. So I've got to ask, like, why are they such fucking pussies? It seems like it's the left. We're the ones who are alpha. And these little pussies, they're the beta male cucks. And they can't take even mild criticism. Ridiculous. Now, for those of you who don't know, who came in late to the chat... Christopher Rufo is the Republican operative who popularized hysteria over critical race theory. Now, he kind of gets a pass on cancel culture hysteria because he astutely pointed out that cancel culture is kind of, uh, kind of a meaningless, vapid term. So that's why he chose to try to push critical race theory to the mainstream, because rather than saying, oh, this is bad because cancel culture, you just fill in you know, the blank with, oh, this is critical race theory or woke or something of that nature. But yeah, conservatives, they are uh, triggered little snowflakes. And apparently, cancel culture is good. And getting uh, triggered by cartoons is good, again, apparently. 
I mean, there's zero consistency with conservatives. Simultaneously, they say that the left are all hysterical, hypersensitive snowflakes. But at the same time, they act that same way. And also, even though we're weak and we're soy boys, we're also very scary. And, you know, we want to control society and throw them all in gulags. I, I just, I, I can't get over how openly hypocritical all of them are. And also how fragile they are. So I don't usually like to talk about who blocked me on Twitter, but I feel like this is kind of a dub, right? Because it just proves my point that conservatives are the true snowflakes and they always have been. And my example was, okay, if you think that conservatives are not snowflakes, test out that theory, condemn God, say something bad about Jesus, anything, just say Jesus had bad hair or Jesus, you know, he wasn't swole enough. Say anything about Jesus. They get triggered because that's blasphemy. But, you know, if you get triggered by something, by bigotry or something, well, suck it up, buttercup. Stop being so fucking sensitive. They're the only ones whose feelings are valid. So, yeah, Jesus had stinky feet. Thank you, Fatal. He did. I'm sure that he had horrible feet. He didn't wear deodorant. Absolutely. Also, just based on the pictures and perhaps the time as well, um, Jesus looked like he didn't wipe his butt good enough. So, yeah. Yeah. Jesus was a dirty booty bottom confirmed. Unacceptable, Jesus. Beta! Beta male, not a beta male.